Hello and welcome to part two of uh, North Park Barn or Ranch. All right, so this is a little eight by 16. It's coming along really quickly. And today was balance. And I started with the top and worked down in layers all the way down. And that way I could kind of see how these value shapes are working with the neighbors. And that's what I go through step by step in uh, this session. So stay tuned. It's very interesting. And uh, we really made a lot of progress. So get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques. And don't be intimidated by a white canvas. In other words, keep painting. That's the thing. Too many of you just stop, you know. And uh, the important thing is just keep at it. And you'll be surprised, you do these videos, you get outside and paint, paint with your friends, you get critiques, you're going to get really good. All right. Let's get to paint. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, good morning, and welcome to part two of um, North Park Ranch. So today is balance day. Yesterday we blocked in, and today we're going to make these colors just zing with each other. So I got a fresh look when I came in, and what I realized, looking at my reference, the darkest dark is really basically parts of the barn and this behind color, this hill on the back. And uh, I gotta get that right. The sky needs to be darker. The mountains are a little too scrapey. And um, yeah, I think I'll start there. So I'll start up here in the sky, get it a little bit darker, a little bit more interesting, and um, start working this painting. All right, I've got my brushes lined out, got my turf on the side, got my paper towels. I think I have sufficient paints laid out. So, let's take a sip of coffee and a deep breath. And get this baby going. Okay, so let's get some, some gray. So here's kind of a gray base here. Uh, this leftover from yesterday, it's got something to do with uh, yellow ochre and gray. And I'm going to make a darker gray off to one side. I'm going to add some cerulean to one side. And I'm going to add some Naples, no, some yellow ochre to one side also. needs to be a little lighter, a little richer. All right, that might be a little too much. I think I knocked it down sufficiently. And so I used up some of that slop paint from yesterday. That's nice. So I'm cleaning off my palette knife. And I'm going to start with a Rosemary Long Flat 279. I dipped it in the turp or the gamsol just to soften it up a little bit from, from yesterday. You get a little stiff overnight. Already I've got paint all over my gloves. Look at that. Jeez. So let's go into this darker gray stuff. And then knock it down with some lighter grays. And back to darker grays. And I'm going to get some some blue in there. Getting some cerulean and some some just regular old blue. Just getting some blue on top of that gray. And I need to bring some down to the horizon. Now I know those are hard strokes, but I'll soften them up here in just a second. And now I'm going to get some blues in here. And 
and some grays. And now some warms. More or less along the horizon. And now back to my grays and blues. So you say, well, when do you put down a gray, when do you put down a blue? The theory I'm going on today is to get the value right with a darker gray, gray blue, and then getting the, the right balance, and then coming in with my blues and my warms. Lightening up my warms just a little bit. Kind of accenting the, the telephone pole here a little bit. I've got a little bit too much yellow here and I'm coming in with my blue. It's a cerulean blue. And now I'm going to soften these darks up on this side of the painting. Okay, I'm going back to my darker blue-gray and getting a few really strong strokes in there. I'm going to get back and see how that's working. I'm going to get some white into this blue-gray stuff here. White into this blue gray combination. And getting this lighter gray into a few places. I like to use a softer brush for this because it, it helps uh, take those hard edges off the, uh, off the painting. Well, we've been dilly-dallying a lot up in here, and it's time to get into this mountain. What I want to do is get a good steely grain. I'm going to go into my ultra French ultramarine blue to get that steely gray look. Let me throw some some of these surrounding colors into it. And I'm going to get some dark gray on one side. Dark gray. And when I say dark gray, that's that Rembrandt cold gray. Uh, 717. Let me make some more blue. out this soft brush I have just a little bit and load it up with the, the blue see what that does it might be too blue so I'm gonna that's a little too blue so I'm gonna go into the blue gray and start that over here that's perfect it's working So if you whack out a telephone pole, you can come back and get it a little later. But I'm trying to be careful between the telephone poles. I don't know. I like, I like verticals in a painting with structures. A little bit more blue in here, or gray in here.
And I want to sharpen the edge of this bar just a little bit. See how slow and methodical I am around the top of this barn. And see how that really, that sharp edge up there really helped out. Now I know there's some snow and other things in this mountain, but I'm, they're not as important right now in this balance phase because I want to balance these value shapes with each other. And the snow in this mountain has more to do with detail, which would be in part three. Okay, now we're going to go in for an even darker guy next. I think because I have, if you look at the reference, they these darks don't look related, but I think they are. But I'm going to have to, I think, to make them feel more related is bring this dark down a little bit or bring this uh, dark up. I think what I'm going to do is do both. So I'm going to go over here with the light and bring it up over the edge just a little bit. All right, let's go back and make an even darker mixture. So we'll go to Ultra Blue. And we're going to go to Transparent Oxide Brown, which is really dark. A little bit of Viridian. And a little bit of Alizarin. So we did blue, red, green, brown. That is dark. If that doesn't show up, there's something wrong with me. Well, there's things wrong with me, but I don't think it's this. Okay, here we go. So I'm trying to get this lighter color out of my brush. And go in here and get a little bit more brown. And let's bring this dark in. So I'll bring him down a little lower. And I will bring him down a little lower. That helps, I think. Let me get back, see how my values are working. Oh, that shows up. <laughs> Gotta access the barn, too. You know, I'm gonna bring this dark down just a little bit by going back to the mountain color. And bring him down. I'm trying to figure out where the roof line is. I kind of had a double line there. There we go. That'll, that'll kind of help. Let's go back to the dark dark and accent the top of this barn with my dark. I'm going to make it dark. The soft brush can get a nice uh, sharp edge on it. It's really nice. And I can have a different roof line. It's a little bit different if you look at it. And I'll sharpen this just a little bit down below. And I'll sharpen this a little bit here too. Sorry to be in the, in the way here. I'll move to the side. You can get a sense of what I'm doing. I better take a look at my timer here. Oh, great. 16 minutes. We are just doing great. Okay, let's figure out where else we can use these dark darts. And I think we can use one right in here. 
And I think we can use some right up in here. Maybe a few on the telephone pole. And maybe a few on this telephone pole. I'm going to just sharpen the edge just by squeezing it. with some grays here. So I'm going to go down to lighter gray and I think I need some darker gray. So there I go with my working right off the edge of this blue stuff here and I will be doing some grays. Actually it kind of goes up a little bit doesn't it? And I will Sharpen the edge of the little sidebar. And I'm going to go back with my dark and fix that line just a little bit. I'm just not getting dark enough because I have so much contamination in my brush. Used to have a steady hand. All right, Whew. man. Let me take a sip of coffee, and we will tackle the barn next. I guess we should figure out where the edge of this barn is, since I have a and I'm a little. I've got two lines there for the top of this barn, and I better figure out which one I'm going to use. And that's a little too spread out. There we go. And I'm going to run just a little light blue over the, the dark here, just to make them a little bit more related. It still shows up just fine. Can make this a little darker on one side. All right. Do we have this sufficiently pointed? Okay. I think we need a light on it this guy and we're going to define it a little bit more right there and right here. Well that was a little sloppy. Okay, I think we know where to go. Alright, let's go into transparent oxide red. Now we're working over a nice dark dark here. I'm going to throw some gold in this, a little bit of alizarin, and some dark brown. Dark brown. A little bit more alizarin. And let me just see what this does here. Too, too light. I'm going to throw some dark in this. We might be in the right neighborhood. Let's try it. It's brown, blue, red. You can see now why it's so important to have that light up on top of this on this roof that really defines what's going on around here. And I think for now that might be the trick. Let me get a little bit more dark right in here. Right in here. All right. 
Let's go down to ground level. Let's get some gold in this mixture here. And uh, I think before that, let's get some dark gray. I'm going to get a little bit of ultra in there too. This gray stuff. And really. Spread it around in these places that need it. And I think we have some good ones out in here too. Let me get the bottom of this painting done. I think I need some good stuff down in there. All right, back to my stabilizing. And I think we need some, it's a good strong line right in here somewhere. We'll get that in there. I'm going to get a little bit of this goldish, brownish stuff we have here and spread some of that inside the, the gray. And then we're going to lighten it up even more on top. So it's a little bit of the barn color in there that is bringing us along here. And I know we're going to lose some of this beautiful color we're about to put on here, but let's get some gold, yellow ochre gold, some cad yellow, medium, and change brushes and put that in a few places on top of this shrubbery stuff. Cleaning my brush as much as I can. And I'm going to go back to this little bit stiffer number three rosemary. It's a, a 2025. And I'm going to go into this gold we made. Spread it around here, particularly in my bushes. Because these are the part of the grasses that are sticking out. I think the darker stuff is more sagey type stuff. Some gold, and some yellow ochre medium. And I need to go back with some dark, so I'm going to go blue, brown, dark gray. And reinforce some of my gray. See, that's pretty strong. And that's what I see to balance out this painting, are some good darks right in here. Okay. Well, there's a pine tree in there I don't have. I will have to work on that. See it right up in here, there's a pine tree. Kind of a skinny fella. And now let's move these fellas off to the side. I don't know if I can use this or not, but oh yeah, that's a nice little pile. Maybe I can use it and clean up my palette. Okay, another cup of coffee, a sip of coffee. Down yesterday, and I'm going to 
come up with a little bit more of cool. And I'm going to also put some pinks in there too. So I'm going to use some um, radiant magenta for my pink. And I think I'm going to use some Severe's blue for the for the blue part of this mixture. And make some stuff. Here we go. Gonna have a little bit of blue here. A little bit of pink on this side. And a little bit of blue on this side. And a little bit of gray mixture between two of them on this side. Throw a little gray in there. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Very subtle. So, let's go in with a number two. I'm sorry, it's a three. Uh, log flat 2025. Rosemary. I'm going to go into the pink here. And I'm going to put that up in here. That would look nice up in here a little bit too. I'm going out the reservation as you can see here and screwing things up. Let's go into some of this blue here, this cerulean, and get some of that in here. I'm being pretty careful right up close to the barn, aren't I? And I'm going to get a nice swath of... and soften some of this as I go along. And I'm going to get now into the area here where all the bushes are. And I'm going to get some snow inside here. I'm not covering up all the warm colors that I have underneath in the white, but about 70%. And if your telephone, or I mean if your fence post is a little too thick, then you can thin it down with this stuff. Like that. I know, there's thick and thin fence posts. Whew. Let's get back. Oh, that's looking so nice. You know, I've got a few minutes left. Oh, I only got a minute left. I was going to probably get a garage door in there. Sometimes you can just get a little bit lighter color here and Make a hint of a door. All right, that's enough. That's balance. Let's get into detail tomorrow. Okay, thanks so much for coming by. This was kind of fun. It
It's pretty easy. And uh, I hope you think that. And uh, with that, let's bring this to a close and uh, see you in part three.